Hey everybody, this is Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff, and this is the iPhone 12 leather sleeve designed to work with MagSafe. And actually, I bought two of them, one for the 12 Pro Max and one for the Mini. Why in the world did you buy these, you ask? So these cases have been taking a lot of heat, which piqued my interest, but usually I just love this kind of quirky stuff. I also really love leather. I buy the Folio wallet cases every year, and Apple didn't release their typical wallet this year, so I figured I'd give this a try. Also, before smartphones were a thing, I would carry around my Palm Pilot or Pocket PC in a sleeve. So this was familiar territory for me. I ultimately figured that since the 12 Pro Max is so huge, I could just use it caseless most of the time, and then use this sleeve when out and about. I have my Apple Watch and AirPods anyway in case I need to interface with my phone. Plus, I thought it could act as a wallet for me for those times I don't feel like carrying a bag. Slung around my wrist, it looks kind of fashionable. It made sense. In use, though, my feelings are very mixed to where I will flat out tell you do not buy this case for the Pro Max. But it's a very cautious maybe for the other ones. If you like sleeves. So let's start off with the mini version. Now right away I can tell that this case was created with the iPhone 12 mini in mind, which we will get more into later. The phone slides right in and makes that delightful MagSafe tone. And we are met with a color matched status window. So it tells you the time with a tap or when you lift it. It tells you who is calling. And it shows you the charging status, at least when you initiate a charge or take it off the charger. The phone is in there snugly, but not too hard to get out, and breaking it in will help. The leather is beautiful, particularly that Baltic blue. And the wrist strap is really nice, it's optional, and even makes it easier to pull it out of my bag. And then you can even fit a card in the dedicated card slot, two at most, though it makes it a bit tight and hard to get out. It's truly a one card slot. It's cute, sleek, different, and has more function than any other sleeve I've seen. So I can see why it would appeal to you if you are a sleeve person. But that is where the good things stop and frustration sets in. So let's move over to the Max model. It's just like the Mini in function and in design, but like I said, this case must have been designed with the Mini in mind because this design doesn't translate well to the bigger size. The phone is insanely hard to get out of the Max sleeve. Now this could be the unit that I got, or it might have something to do with how oil slick those stainless steel sides can get. It's very slippery, and in there quite tight. I've spent a week stretching it out in ways I'm not sure I recommend, so it has finally improved a bit, but still unpleasant. Strong fingers are a must with this one. I find the best way to get the phone out of the sleeve is to hold your hand beneath it and give it a bit of a shake. Then it comes down to where I can grab it. I don't need to do this with the mini. And of course, this action can create a problem of its own if the phone spills out onto the floor. Not what you want. I also found that you can squeeze the sides up near the camera and it will come down more easily. It gives the camera bump more leeway to slide out of its spot. I just don't like doing that to the case because I don't want to deform the case or make the sleeve too loose over time. Also, they didn't think the card slot through on the Max. When you place a card inside of the Mini, if pushed in all the way, the card sits where you can pretty easily get a grip on it and pull it out. Now, if you push it in all the way on the Max, it sits where you really can't hope to grab it, though you can shimmy it down. But if you put two in there, good luck. You aren't getting them out unless you take the phone out first. It's so tight and I just can't get a proper grip. So whenever you put a card in, you have to consciously not put it in too far. Then there is the MagSafe puck. So it's really nice that it charges through the case, but the puck leaves marks on the leather. Though that's par for the course and Apple makes you dutifully aware. So I might just plug it in from the bottom to keep the leather wearing more evenly or just get over myself. I do notice that the MagSafe isn't always recognized. If the phone isn't in just the right spot, it just stays on the usual lock screen, which is actually fine because the clock shows up regardless. It just doesn't color match. Then a really interesting bug popped up. Sometimes when taking the phone out of the case, particularly if the clock screen is on, it will get stuck that way. And this happened a few times. 
No matter what I did, I could not get it off the blue clock screen. Sliding it back in did nothing. Swiping up for the home screen also did nothing. The only thing that helped was to click the side button five times and that forced the power off screen. So I was able to turn it off and restart it. Bad bug, I hope they see this and fix it. Now, when it comes to the utility of the case and what use you can get out of your phone while it's in it, it's very minimal purposefully, which I kind of like because it helps you disconnect. But I feel like they have some missed opportunities here. Most strangely, even though you can see who's calling through the status window, you can't answer the call from the status window. To answer a call, you must pull the phone out of the case and do so successfully in time to answer that call. And then if you slide it back in to try and take advantage of the earpiece, it hangs up the call. That blew my mind. You can take calls with the phone inside of the sleeve though. So if you have your AirPods connected, you can answer a call through the AirPods. You can also navigate to auto answer calls buried underneath accessibility settings, enable it, and the call will pick up automatically after however many seconds you choose. Then you can talk through the case. The quality through the sleeve sounded just fine. I thought maybe they didn't want people to talk on the phone through the case because the back microphone is obstructed. If they use that microphone for noise cancellation, I guess that makes sense, sorta. I don't know, maybe they will allow us to double tap to answer or slide to answer in an update, but I sincerely don't count on it. Oh, I just got the 14.3 update and it still hangs up when you slide the phone back in the sleeve. And also they changed the appearance of the clock which sticks out on the Baltic blue. The numbers went from black to a lighter blue, and the clock now dims before timing out. I honestly like the old look better. So why the heck did they give us a cutout for the speaker that they don't want us to actually use? I don't actually think it's for the speaker at all, but for the ambient light sensor that resides above it. The ambient light sensor tells the status window to get brighter in high ambient conditions, like outdoors. I'm just kind of baffled by the whole experience. It would have also been really nice while charging if we could tap to see the charging percentage and not just see the charging symbol. You have to pull it off the charger to show the percentage or place it back on the charger. Also, when a text comes through or other notification, your phone will notify you, but the status window shows no evidence of the notification. That can also be a bit frustrating. I imagine so many things that they could have done to control the phone through this little window. But I think Apple wanted this to be very, very minimal without lots of fuss. But there is such a thing as too minimal. Now for some other little miscellaneous things I've noticed that are quite important. This case may or may not be compatible with your screen protector. It's very tight and it's caused both my glass and plastic screen protectors to bubble up on the sides. And that suede interior likes to get linty and stick to the sides of the screen protectors because of the adhesive. You also absolutely cannot use this sleeve with another case. Not even an extremely thin one like the totally type cases. So if you thought you would use this to augment some kind of case experience, nope. I did manage to force it in all the way for science with the super thin case on, but I kid you not, it took 20 minutes to shimmy and shake the thing out. Don't do it. Maybe you'll be able to get away with putting a skin on it, and that's a big maybe if the sliding motion doesn't end up pulling it back or getting suede stuck in the adhesive to where the adhesive won't stick anymore. This sleeve really is meant to be used with a bare phone. So to wrap this all up, I thought the sleeve was a novel idea, and never mind the price. So as far as sleeves go, it has some cool functionality that you just don't get anywhere else. Even if the features kind of feel like a bait and switch, it still does things that other sleeves don't. What bothers me is that it breaks very basic functionality, such as being able to accept a phone call in a normal manner and then slide it back in for protection. No, it, it hangs up. Maybe they'll fix this. It's bananas and it makes me want to tear out the MagSafe element as MagSafe marks up the case anyway, just so I can use my sleeve and make calls. Not asking for much. Anyway, it's the most bizarre accessory I've seen Apple release, and the Max version is just too hard to use. You've been warned. But if after all of this, these things don't bother you and you have the cash, then go for it. Apple might just update the functionality, but it's probably a poor use of your $129. And I'm someone who really wanted to like this. I didn't buy it to make fun of it. I bought it to love it, and I hate it. So there's that. So tell me what you guys think. 
So this has been Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss future videos. I'm working on a long-term review for the iPhone 12 series. So stay tuned for that and have a good night, you guys. Bye!